on today's Apple Daily. Intel's marketing team are drunk. iPhone 13 leak bomb from Gioriku. Find my stuff that Apple didn't make goes live. The death of LG phones and Apple event formats going forward. That's a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. I'm iCave David and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And let's get into our first story. Intel's marketing team are clearly drunk. In a move that I don't think anyone saw coming, after poaching Justin I'm a Mac Long to talk about how brilliantly Intel lets computers be different colours, and how people game on very thin laptops, and other very relevant points, Intel's latest advert features a MacBook Pro, unironically under the headline, the world's best processor on a thin and light laptop. And I certainly agree. And everything in the ad actually seems to be true, as it lower down it claims that this is based on the unique features and testing of Intel Core i7 1185G7 processor. Now, a quick look at Geekbench 5's CPU results shows that this processor scores a respectable 1541 in single cores. Now, I am cherry picking the best results to give it a decent shot, and 5843 in multi core. Now, in most tests of the same chip, they scored somewhere in the 1400s in single core and around 4800 in multi core. But let's give it the benefit of the doubt with the higher numbers. Then when we move over to the M1, we are consistently in the 1700 to 1730 range for single core and multi-core around 7500 to 7630, which I guess makes the advert true. The MacBook Pro in the image probably does contain the world's best processor on a thin and light laptop, because that laptop is a MacBook Pro with M1. And based on the testing of the Core i7 1185G7, it really is the best. But also, the dude is wearing Beats and possibly using an Apple Magic Mouse. And that is an iPhone behind him. But if Intel was hoping to fool people into thinking that their chips were faster, the expected M1X SOP, system on a package, that is thought to be arriving in the next couple of weeks, will just be incredible in comparison to the M1. And you can check out our performance predictions right up here. Now you might have to wait a couple of weeks for an M1X, but you don't have to wait for an iCave t-shirt, mug, sticker or hoodie. You can order those at iCaveDave.com forward slash merch today. iPhone 13 leak bombs. McGuire Wood on Twitter dropped a whole bunch of iPhone 13. Yes, that's the name he's going with, not the 12S, and he seems to know what he's talking about. But yes, he dropped a whole bunch of Apple knowledge on us on April the 6th, and although he's not Apple track ranked, I do trust this guy. We've chatted a bit on Twitter, and he's a really awesome guy. So let's do this iOS 15 is expected to get a redesigned control center similar to Big Sur's current version, which sounds pretty great to me, as right now on the desktop OS, it actually looks way more touchable than the touch screens. A new API is coming that will allow devs to need multi-factor authentication, so you may have to use the face ID and the underscreen fingerprint reader. Oh yes, and that underscreen touch ID will apparently be ultrasonic but these screens will be serialized to the body of the phone, so replacing your own display will be much harder. Though, if the ultrasonic sensors are actually built into the screen itself, there may not be many third-party options for you anyway. iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max are also to get 1TB storage options, uh, which we had heard about before. He also suggests that the black colour has been approved, which was first rumoured by Max Weinbeck, along with an orange colour that hasn't been mentioned in Maguire's tweets. But the always-on display has been approved and will use Apple Watch-style complications. Then going beyond the iPhone, he's also suggesting that Face ID for the Mac has been successfully made and that resources are now being pushed towards MacBooks at this point with prototype displays with Face ID cutouts existing at this point. Now, this feels a lot like an info dump rather than a kind of news story, but there are some really nice points in there, especially that idea of Face ID coming to the Macs and MacBooks. While we'd seen rumours for the code early in Big Sur builds, it's nice to get a tip that they're still kind of on track for it and it shouldn't be too far into the distant future before we start to get them. Find My Stuff That Apple Didn't Make Goes Live. The Find My Network accessory program enables users to keep track of their belongings in the new items tab within the Find My app. The Find My Network has now been active for over a decade and is embracing third party object trackers, beginning with Belkin, Chipolo and Van Moof. Now, we haven't seen the air tags just yet, but it seems unlikely that Apple would release those without an event to explain what they are and why you need them. So, fingers crossed, we'll have an event announcement very, very soon. Now, we've not done this for a long time, but Notification Squad is where you can subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and let me know in the comments section with the hashtag Notification Squad that you've done those two things, 
and then I will be able to give you a shout out just like Grey or Grey who has joined our notification squad yesterday. Thank you for joining and if you want a shout out you know what to do. Now let's get into some iCave answers and just like with notification squad use the hashtag iCave answers down in the comment section if you've got a question you would like me to answer in a future show. Eliezer Aquino asks, iCave answers LG left the smartphone business. What do you think this means? Might they be secretly working on the LG wing? Whilst LG TVs are very popular and have high rating, what might happen after today in the future of LG? Okay, so yeah, LG has pulled out of the smartphone business. I don't think they're secretly working on phones behind the scenes. I think they have just literally pulled out completely. Um, their most successful phone, I believe, sold about 10 million uh, items, and that was in about 2014. That was kind of their peak, and they haven't really done a great deal since then. Um, they've brought a lot of really cool features, and I think... Marquez Brownlee has gone through and done uh, a really comprehensive video on LG phones and all the stuff that they pioneered, but they had the first dual cameras, the first triple cameras, the first QHD displays, um, all sorts of stuff that uh, we kind of take for granted now, the first dual core and quad core processors in a phone. So without LG, we wouldn't be where we are right now. Uh, the LG wing was a bit of a weird one. Um, but very, very cool. Uh, you know, at least they were innovating in a way. But no, I don't see them coming back into the smartphone market. They are very busy with making panels. I think they make quite a few of the panels for uh, for Apple stuff. And obviously uh, TVs and monitors and that kind of thing. So they're going to be pretty busy. The LG is not going anywhere. It's just that they finally pulled the plug on the smartphone thing that wasn't really doing them any favours. Marcin Kovalchik asks, I cave answers. Do you think Apple will continue the video style type of events long term, or will they push towards in-person events as soon as possible? This is a question that a few days ago I would have had a very different answer for, but it does look like Apple really hates doing these digital events and really wants to get people back in in person. This is coming from a source at Bloomberg through Mark Gurman. But yeah, Apple apparently really doesn't like doing the uh, the digital events. They have been very much a fill-in for when they've not been able to do the in-person events and they are waiting uh, until they're able to do uh, an in-person event as soon as possible for the VR kind of full headset version of their head-mounted display. This is the one that's going to probably cost around $3,000 uh, from what we're hearing. It's going to contain two 8K displays with eyeball tracking so that it only needs to render at high resolution the stuff that you're looking right at and then the rest of it can kind of be a bit blurry because it doesn't, your eye won't tell the difference anyway. So for me personally, I'm a huge fan of the uh, of the digital events, I think they've done incredible production, I think they've looked fantastic, and I think they've been uh, every bit as exciting, really, as the uh, the real-life events. Now, what won't happen if we go back to real-life events is um, we won't have the leaks where people are kind of sharing the link for the whole video before the actual video is finished, so people are able to skip ahead, so that won't happen, um, because it's just a live event but it also means that there is going to be uh, some of the cringy jokes back and uh, obviously sometimes things don't go right in the real events but the one thing that might change if we end up with real life uh, events instead of a pre-recorded event we might get more products in a single event the video digital events that we've been seeing have been a lot smaller in terms of the number of products that have been released and announced Whereas before we had a bit more of a state of the union from Tim Cook moving on to a whole bunch of products. And I guess that's because they're having to get everyone together. So it makes sense to uh, announce as much as they can rather than bringing people in more often. Hopefully that makes sense. But yes, it looks like we are going back to in-person events, which I'm a little disappointed by. And finally, Tony Ward asks, I cave answers, Dave. Apple has invested heavily in VRAR and has bought the company that developed the motion capture mock-up for Xbox. This would suggest the Apple TV will have enhanced interactive gaming capabilities. Presumably this would require a camera to be added to the Apple TV. Apple is rumored to be developing Apple glasses. Do you see this technology being made available in the new Apple TV? Yeah, Apple did buy a company called PrimeSense. That was way back in 2013 or 2014, I believe. I have mentioned it in a previous video. Um, but yes, it was the company that was originally behind uh, the Kinect uh, for Xbox, which was that kind of motion tracking thing. And the technology from that was kind of rolled into Face ID 
and uh, and emojis and that kind of stuff that Apple has done in the past. So um, the dot projectors and all that kind of thing. So yeah, I absolutely think that Apple could well do something like that. We've talked about exactly that in a previous video too, uh, where it would probably be like a sensor bar that sits across the top or the bottom of your TV um, at the moment, and that would have LiDAR and stuff like that in it. So it would probably use LiDAR to detect where everyone is rather than uh, normal light cameras. However, if you're going to put a bar up at the top of that TV, uh, I would assume they would put in a FaceTime camera as well, so you can do FaceTime calls on your telly. That makes a lot of sense. You'd also put your microphones and stuff like that into that bar, uh, maybe stereo microphones. That could work quite well for this sort of thing. Um, in terms of Apple Glasses being integrated with it, I would assume they will be. I think Apple Glasses is probably going to be more notification-based, uh, a bit more like your watch. Uh, whereas the augmented reality kind of mixed reality headset that they're doing before that, which we mentioned earlier in the show, uh, is more likely to be the one that integrates a lot more fully with the TV. So don't forget, if you've got a question for me, let me know down in the comments. If you want to join the notification squad, subscribe, ring the bell, and let me know in the comments that you've done that. And I will see you in the next show. Thank you so much.